This is one of a series of videos talking about how to take measured quantities, including uncertainties, and do calculations with them. And in particular, when it's relevant, I'm going to look at the dominant error rule for, or weakest link rule, for how to combine uncertainties. But uh, for this particular example, uh, the first part of it, at least, we don't need to worry about that. It, it applies generally. And so uh, the question I want to ask is, I've got this data on this experiment. I want to know what is v1 squared, the first, the initial speed squared. Uh, technically speaking, what I really want to know is the initial kinetic energy of block one, one half times m1 times v1 squared. But v1 squared is the first step in figuring that out, and we don't have a rule for that. Now, uh, obviously, I can do this calculation. v1 squared is v1 squared is going to be uh, 2.80 meters per second squared, and I keep forgetting to grab a calculator. I should have done it for this one. I'm going to regret it. But anyway, 2.8 squared uh, is 7.84. So this is 7.84 meters squared per second squared. Don't forget to square the units. That's my v1 squared. But now the question is, how do I deal with the fact that I'm squaring this? Well, OK, your intuition is going to be, squaring v1 squared to just multiply v1 times v1. It's a product, so I can use the rule we use for products and compare the relative errors and take the larger of the two, but they're the same, so the same size. The one problem is that the dominant error rule, when you look at powers, we want to be a bit, we, would, we, or any error rule, when we look at powers would be, uh, the usual product rules would be a bad estimate because it turns out Usually, when we're talking about dominant error or adding errors in quadrature or any sort of way of adding errors, usually we're sort of assuming in our minds that the uncertainty in the first thing in the product is independent of the, certain, the uncertainty in the second thing in the product. Sometimes they'll both be high, sometimes both low, but a lot of times they won't be high and one low or one low and one high, and they sort of cancel out. It's that canceling out sometimes that makes something like these dominant error rule or other uncertainty product rules work. V1 squared, we know that's not the case. If my V1 measurement is a little bit too high by, you know, by 2% by too high or something, V1 squared, we know both of them are too high. It's going to get even worse. So the rule for powers of quantities is that for any, uh, this is some V1 to the second power, the rule is multiply the relative uncertainty by the absolute value of the power. That's the rule. So in particular, for this case, my relative uncertainty is 3.6%. So uh, I guess I should say my relative uncertainty in V1 squared. So this is, this is how we write relative uncertainty as usual, right? It's the little delta, lowercase delta, means uncertainty in. The uncertainty in V1 squared is the absolute uncertainty. Divided by V1 squared is the, it gives us the relative uncertainty, the percent uncertainty. So that is just equal to the absolute value of 2, because 2 is the exponent, it's the power, times the relative uncertainty in V1 itself. And so that's 2 times um, uh, 3.6%, 3.6%, which is, in fact, 7.2%. So my quantity. V1 squared is 7.84 meters squared per second squared plus or minus 7.2%. And so uh, if I were going to do an absolute uncertainty there, once again, going back to my, uh, my phone calculator, I'll write it down. The absolute uncertainty in V1 squared then is equal to 7.84 meters squared per second squared times 0.072, that's 72%. Okay, phone, do your business. Um, 7.84 times 0 0.072, 0 0.56, it says. Uh, zero point, it would be 0 0.564 uh, meters squared 
per second squared. But since this is an uncertainty, I'm going to just round that right off and say that's approximately 0 0.6 meters squared per second squared. So there we go. I would report this then. I would say that V1 squared is equal to, well, this is only one decimal place. It, the, I've, rounded, I've rounded off to, the, to one sig fig because the first sig fig is not a one or a two in this. I've rounded to one sig fig there. And so I'm going to do plus or minus 0.6. I only keep one decimal place. I would say this is 7.84. Oh, sorry, 7.8. I round off to match the uncertainty. 7.8 meters squared per second squared, plus or minus 0 0.6 meters squared per second squared. You can see that squaring the quantity really makes the uncertainty much worse, right? Uh, that squaring really does a big deal. And again, this is the rule for squaring, which is one of the most common things to come up in physics formulas. But if you need to, I should point out that this powers thing applies much more generally. If I had wanted to calculate for some reason the square root of v1, well, the square root of x is just x to the one half power. So if I wanted, if I had been doing v1, the square root of v1, that would have been v1 to the one half power. I would have taken the absolute value of one half times the relative uncertainty. Square roots make the percent uncertainty smaller. Cool. If I had done an inverse, one over v1, if for, if for some reason I was dividing by v1, in the cases I might be solving for a mass or something. If I were dividing by v1, dividing by 1 over x is just x to the negative 1 power. The power is negative 1, so the absolute value of negative 1 is just positive 1. Dividing by something has the same absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. It has the same percent uncertainty as, it, as the original quantity had. Doing, doing 1 over x has the same percent uncertainty as x does. So uh, the, this rule is actually pretty broad. You just multiply the relative uncertainty by the absolute value of the power, and you're set.